the biggest thing we do is we put the baits on a flotation system so that when we drop them out of the helicopter, they'll float down slowly and actually hang up in the forest canopy. When they're in the forest canopy, virtually the only thing that can get to them are brown tree snakes. On the largest thing we do is we attach the baits to a flotation device so when we're dropping them out of the helicopter, they float gradually down and end up hanging in the tree canopy. Once they're at the tree canopy level, nearly the only thing that can reach them is our prey, the brown tree snake. On December 1, 2013, the skies over Guam were the site of one of history's most bizarre military-supported campaigns. The brown tree snake is one of the world's most infamous invasive predators. And here on Guam, from helicopters buzzing the treetops, thousands of minute cardboard parachutes floated down into the dense forests of the island. They each consisted of a dead neonatal mouse upon which a tablet of acetaminophen was glued. Each of them held a tiny dead mouse, but this was no spontaneous action. The mission had one very clear target, an enemy that had devastated Guam's ecosystem, destroyed its economy, and taunted decades of attempts to eradicate it. Everybody mocked the United States for dropping thousands of mice on Guam. They came to regret it exactly one year later. It was an unusual scene in the skies above Guam. On that typical Sunday morning of December 1, 2013, at Anderson Air Force Base on Guam's Green Island in the Western Pacific, the weather was peaceful. The sky arched in an unbroken canvas of pale blue while a light wind rustled the trees below. But in this tranquility, an uncommon and unnerving phenomenon was taking place above. Helicopters buzzed constantly as they flew low over the forest cover that shrouds the island's northern extremity. And then, out of the whirling rotors, thousands of tiny things started raining down into the sunlight, dancing on green tissue paper wings as thin as a leaf. From afar, the falling forms looked like peculiar, thin snowflakes. Each one was a small cardboard parachute deploying elegantly in the air. But they were no standard parachutes. Strung from each was a lifeless mouse tied tightly to two small pieces of card, with green tissue paper crumpled into an inverted horseshoe to trap the air and retard the descent. This strange aerial drop was the biggest of its type, with 2,000 mice dotted about the forest below, each drop to fall gently amongst the trees. What made this scene so strange was not only how many mice were raining from the sky but also the dark motive behind it. These animals were not alive, nor were they harmless. In each mouse's body was a powerful toxin precisely designed to attack a deadly predator that roamed the island. These mice, lifeless and immobile, were part of a highly organized mission, one that tied science, military efficiency, and a desperate necessity to defend Guam's delicate environment. While the small mice didn't understand their purpose, their quiet mission was evident, to be used as bait in a deadly trap targeting an alien invasion unlike any Guam had ever known. To comprehend the seriousness of this odd strategy, it is important to realize the covert struggle Guam has endured for decades, one that was not seen by most but disastrous in its impact. Guam, a long, thin island extending only 31 miles in length and 6 miles wide at its widest point, is an essential U.S. military base rich in history and strategic significance since World War II. But aside from its strategic importance, this island paradise has been afflicted by the unfettered encroachment of a silent foe, the brown tree snake. Native to faraway regions beyond Guam, in the northern Australian forests, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands, the brown tree snake is a nocturnal, quick-moving hunter well suited to stalking in trees. The precise conditions of its arrival in Guam are not known, but it is largely surmised that post-war the snake traveled on board Allied military cargo vessels or hidden in the landing gear compartments of aircraft. Released into Guam's ecosystem, the snake found itself on an island perfectly suited to its growth, a hot and damp climate, a food supply rich in naive prey species, and a lack of native predators to hold its numbers in check. The effects were catastrophic. This one species released an ecological tragedy, quickly killing off native bird populations and throwing Guam's wildlife balance into chaos. Birds that had co-evolved for thousands of years without predators from snakes were suddenly left defenseless, their populations dwindling to nearly the point of extinction. 
the ecosystem of the island started collapsing in ways scientists had never experienced before, endangering not only biodiversity but Guam's cultural identity and environmental well-being as well. Confronted with this urgency, traditional methods of control failed. The brown tree snake was nocturnal, elusive, and able to fit into small crevices, thus making it virtually impossible to poison or catch directly. The United States government and wildlife agencies were compelled to try new things, so they made the remarkable decision to drop thousands of poison mouse bodies from the air. It was a daring, contentious strategy, one that used the snake's own predatory nature against it while taking minimal risks to other species and people. The aerial dispersal of these poisonous mice was a desperate shot in the dark aimed at preserving Guam's native heritage from slowly disappearing. The brown tree snake was so deadly because it is one of the planet's most infamous invasive predators. Unintentionally introduced to Guam shortly after World War II, it started its takeover almost undetected. Initially, these greenish-brown, night-active snakes fed on small and plentiful island life like lizards, frogs, and insects. The balance of nature seemed largely unaffected. But the brown tree snake is not an ordinary predator. Highly adaptable and carnivorous, it developed from tiny juveniles into adults that averaged over 10 feet in length, with its diet expanding exponentially over the years. What particularly made the snake so perilous was the huge appetite it had for birds, eggs, and small mammals. Most snakes limit themselves to small prey sizes, but the brown tree snake had a staggering ability to consume huge meals. A remarkable report documents a snake devouring a bird weighing almost 80% of its own body weight, a feat that testifies to its predatory agility and determination. The effects of this feeding behavior were quick and merciless. In just one generation, the brown tree snake eliminated Guam's native birds. The statistics are staggering, 75% of native bird species declined drastically, and 10 out of 12 endemic bird species completely disappeared from the island. Birds that had evolved in isolation, with no experience of snake predators, were destroyed with unprecedented rapidity. Birds had been the weavers of Guam's ecological tapestry for a long time. They were the seed dispersers, and as such, they were responsible for the regeneration and well-being of the island's forests. With the birds either vanished or significantly reduced, this essential process disintegrated. Researchers reported a dramatic 92% reduction in tree regeneration, with seeds no longer being transported far from their parent trees to germinate in other areas. The structure of the forest disintegrated, with deep and lasting effects on the entire ecosystem of the island. Spiders benefited from the lack of birds to control populations of insects. Guam's population of spiders grew to levels almost 40 times larger than on neighboring islands that were still snake-free. The forests of the island, once thriving and balanced, became bizarre and foreboding lands infested with arachnids. At the same time, the population of brown tree snakes itself exploded. Density as high as 13,000 snakes per square mile was achieved in some of the most impacted territories, a number higher even than the one reached in the Amazon rainforest, one of the most diverse places on earth. This incredible density of predators guaranteed that surviving native wildlife had small prospects for recovery. The environmental destruction wrought by the brown tree snake was only half the tale. The snakes would ascend anything vertical, trees, structures, and, importantly, power poles. This led them to come into regular contact with infrastructure, with disastrous consequences. The snakes invaded electrical substations and transformer enclosures, resulting in widespread power failures that became a chronic and costly issue for Guam. An average of 80 power outages per year on the island directly resulting from the brown tree snake's interference with electrical infrastructure was experienced on average. The cost, both financially and otherwise, was enormous. Up to $4 million in repairs, downtime, and prevention was lost yearly, some estimates figured. But the cost was not limited to electrical infrastructure alone. Tourism, an important cornerstone of the economy of Guam, took a severe hit as the island developed an undesired notoriety. Tourists who heard tales of poisonous snakes crawling through suburban streets and forests that were teeming with spiders were discouraged from visiting this Pacific haven. 
The vision of an island plague-ridden with invasive predators eclipsed its natural wonder and cultural riches, creating ripples in local economies and the tourism industry. Far more ominous was the danger of the snake spread off Guam. Brown tree snakes had already ridden upon transport and shipping cargo to almost all the islands in Micronesia that had direct or indirect shipping connections with Guam. The threat of these snakes reaching larger and more ecologically sensitive islands was a worst-case scenario. Hawaii itself was specifically at high risk. Its native environments, such as Guam's once were, are isolated and naive to the presence of such predators. The arrival of the brown tree snake there would be disaster on an even larger scale, eradicating native birds, destabilizing ecosystems, and inflicting serious economic damage. Guam's history of invasion by the brown tree snake is a chilling reminder of the delicacy of island ecosystems facing invasives, and it is a strong warning of the deep-reaching ramifications that one little creature can cause by being introduced into an environment that is not ready for it. The previous failed fights prior to the mice. The island of Guam had been engaged in a determined fight against the brown tree snake, an aggressive invasive species, for decades. Conservationists and officials spent millions on traditional measures in trying to curb and stem the increasing population. Still, the never-ending invader expanded its numbers and dispersed with calamitous results. The initial line of defense was the training of specifically chosen dogs to detect snakes at Guam's ports and airports, the vital gateways by which the snakes might leave the island and invade nearby ecosystems. These dog teams proved very effective at detecting the slimy intruders in cargo shipments, luggage, and other materials entering and leaving Guam, offering some reassurance that the issue would not spread beyond the shores of the island. In addition to these surveys, snake traps numbered in the thousands were placed strategically across zones considered at risk or infested. The traps were set to ensnare snakes that were traveling through routes, particularly around residential areas and key ecological locations. Although the traps represented a technological advancement, they were restricted by the elusive nature of the brown tree snake and the enormity of Guam's wilderness. Snakes liked dense, impassable northern jungles, where the ground was rough and access was very difficult. Inspectors and wildlife officers frequently found themselves fighting dense foliage, steep terrain, and near-permanent humidity, making orderly trapping a slow, hazardous, and frequently incomplete one. In spite of all these precautions, brown tree snake population on Guam kept increasing unabated. Estimates in 2013 put nearly 2 million snakes inhabiting the island. An astronomical figure given the size of Guam and the toll taken on wildlife endemic to the island. Bird populations were at an all-time low, native reptiles were disappearing, and the equilibrium of Guam's ecosystem was sliding into chaos. Therefore, the most significant impact is unprecedented extinction of an island offa. It's occurred nowhere else on earth and people researched this problem. It became ever more painfully obvious to scientists and policymakers alike that the traditional containment measures were not enough. The extent of the problem coupled with the snake's crafty habits and jungle's unkind terrain meant that piecemeal initiatives were no longer feasible. Guam stood at a crossroads. The status quo could only postpone the inevitable further devastation. If hope existed to revitalize the island's natural order, a completely different strategy was necessary, one that would act on an island-wide basis and target the very heart of the snake plague.